Gato Perro! And, oh yeah, it's happening. One year later, after the game released, we're finally getting ourselves an imported Super Articulate Spider-Man based off of the video game from Insomniac. I'm very excited. We're doing it live. My cat's in the camera. It doesn't matter. This packaging looks pretty cool. I ordered this straight from eBay from Japan, which I think is the best way to go um, to avoid. Uh, I'm pretty sure American sellers are going to want to up the price on this one. I've seen it go up to 120 to 150 but I myself found this for 68 bucks from Japan shipped, and it took about a week to get here. So pretty good deal. Uh, pretty cool looking box, man. I like the art on the front. Over here we got everybody's desktop wallpaper, another picture from the video game itself, and over here we got all the really cool poses we can get him into and the accessories. So enough dilly-dallying, let's open this figure up and I'll get my cat out of the way. Alright, now here we have the SH Figure Arts PS4 Advanced Suit Spider-Man. Now the good news is my initial concerns are no longer a problem. My initial concerns were that the white on the spider, the wrist, and everywhere else would come off as a little bit as not enough white paint added and it would be kind of buffery and just wouldn't look right. So they actually nailed that part of the way down. It does look crystal clear. Everything looks perfect. The eyes, the back spider, which is very important to me, the gauntlets on the bottom of the wrist, and even on the bottom of the boots. Now the bad news unfortunately is that as good of articulation that he has and as good as the bottom half is for the articulation as in the legs his arms do suffer a lot mostly in the stubborn shoulders now I don't get what the issue is and I've been messing around with this guy and I took all the pictures necessary for the end of the video that you're gonna see and I can't get his arms to go out any more than that much which I don't get because in the back of the box you can see that there are some promo images that clearly show him with this out at a 90 degree angle now I wish I could do that with the figure and I've been messing around with it but I can't get it to budge and basically I'm honestly scared this is a $60 figure and you know money doesn't grow on trees especially not for me and so breaking it is not an option so I went back to my homecoming spider-man for message figure arts and I noticed that he has the same kind of inner workings for the shoulders and let's see what I noticed is that for this one it kind of dropped down. No, I did, was doing it earlier. See, I think it dropped down. I think it could go out a little bit more. Or was it this side? I don't know what it was. I did something, but I could dig the shoulder inside of that socket a lot more. But point is, even this guy even has more range. So that sucks, especially because I gave up on this one a while ago. And I don't have any of the other just figure arts because this one broke straight out of the box from the leg. So I basically super glued it and it's been stuck in this position for a long, long time. So I haven't had an Asus figure arts since that one. So no, I don't have the Iron Spider. I don't have the uh, Far From Home. Basically, my uh, consent of purchase is if I like something, I'll buy it. If I don't, I'm not going to buy it. And I'm not a big fan of the uh, Far From Home costume, personally, you know. It's just a personal thing. I don't care for all the black. Now, the PS4 Spider-Man is a different story. I do like the suit. I played the game. I love the game. So of course I'm going to buy it. So taking a look at the details that they put into the costume and this Spider-Man in general, they are pretty cool. They are very detailed. It's very accurate. The only thing that's missing for me personally is any kind of texture on the blue. There's no texture, but I can look past that because in the game, you know, most of the time it's from a, um, a third person perspective and Spider-Man is kind of far from the camera, so you can't really see it anyway, but no big deal. So like I said, everything else is painted really well, all the lines. The other thing is that they did miss out on any kind of web uh, pattern inside of the armpits. On the inside, they do have the continuation of the spider leg. Now, for mine, it does suck. I noticed last minute that they completely skipped out on the paint for the webs on my right arm. So the complete forearm is just devoid of any kind of um, black outline around or, or in the web. So that sucks a little bit. But like I said, the white... It's painted really well, the knuckles over here on top of the palm, across the wrist, the chest. Now, his anatomy is a little bit weird. It does look pretty cool once it's in poses, but something about him just looks weird. I think it's mostly this crotch piece that's designed. Uh, okay, I think it's a floating piece. No, I don't think so, but I don't know. I still gotta get used to the way they articulate their legs, because it's basically chopped up into like one two three four five six different pieces 
or something like that. But I don't mind because of the range that this guy has. Now I'm not going to get into articulation, but you can get him into some crazy poses down in the legs. But the other part that sucks is the ankles. Now I've been working around with these ankles a little bit for the pictures. And they are kind of weird to move. For some reason, uh, it's just figure it's sculpted the bottom of his ankles really down low. I think they probably should have caved in a little bit more of, an, of a space for that ball joint to go up in. But in going backwards, I've noticed that you can probably shimmy it a little bit. <laughs> about that much I don't think that should affect the paint that much on the back of the uh, the ankle but it works you can get it down getting it up though especially for crouching poses it sucks because I can't use the same technique so mm, the most it goes up is that because then they just hidden plastic with plastic so that sucks really bad but there's a detail on the bottom of the feet it looks pretty cool there are no peg holes but yeah man uh, the detail is just very game accurate. I really like that. Um, there is even a sculpted web line inside of his neck. So that's pretty cool. And there is visible web shooters on the side. Another thing to note is that there is no paints on the palms on any of the interchangeable hands. None of the web lines are painted in. So I guess that's the typical thing. If the hands are too small, there's just no paint on them. But no big deal. Not something you can notice from far away. So, let's move on to his many, many accessories. Now this is something really cool. They included a separate head altogether for Spider-Man with some really wide eyes. Now, I love the way this looks, man. Spider-Man with just gigantic wide eyes is definitely my thing. Looks pretty cool. Obviously, consistent with the way that this head is. Uh, you know, just different eyes. Now, aside from that, we do get interchangeable eyes for this head. So, it just pops off and you get this other head on and we'll show you how to dig out the eyes so it comes with a little plastic tool that you can use to dig out the eyes you can either use your fingernails which I started you doing but at, kind of, at one point I felt like I'm just scratching off the paint see it comes off like that but what you're meant to do is take off the head and there's these little um, joints in there that you can poke out using this right here so then you just poke it out the eye comes out take it out uh, let's see you pick out some of the other eyes you want like the super squinty and there we go you can get spider-man squinting or making a really funny face so that's pretty cool you get a total set of two different sets of eyes so they look like this and they range from squinty to super squinty and the regular size so that's pretty cool uh, let's check out those hands all right so he does uh, Alright, so he does come with his standard amount of Spider-Man hands that we expect. So we got his uh, wall crawling hands, aka web split open hands, his relaxed hands right here, his web shooting hands. And we got these unique hands over here that are meant to hold the cell phone or the other web bomb accessories. Now, can you guys even see this? This is freaking tiny. This is really skinny. And to be honest with you, it barely even does a good job holding it. Of course, he's going to do it on camera. So... If you have other cell phones, like from other figures, I recommend you to do that more because this is just way too thin and it's going to get lost in the vacuum. Just like it will with these web bombs right here. Uh, kind of neat, you know, silver on both sides. Mostly uh, metallic red. And they are meant to be held in these exact hands as well. And, uh, never mind. They kind of just balance there. I think they fit a lot better in the relaxed hands, to be honest with you. It's because they could just cup into the palm. Um, see the other hands that are important are these web holding hands and not this side. This side is the one that has a hole on the side of the palm of the hand and that is meant for this accessory which is brand new to any Spider-Man figure and it's supposed to represent uh, the web that is wrapped around his hand when, it, when he's web swinging. So there is a little uh, tab right there that's supposed to go into this hole so you're supposed to connect it and then try to fight it over his knuckles now it does take a little bit of effort so uh, you'll mostly just see it in the pictures because it's gonna be kind of a while before I can get it on camera but the point is it's supposed to wrap, wrap around the hand and it's supposed to look really clean and smooth and it looks sexy so there's that here's the uh, other webs here's a much shorter web the medium sized web and here's the much longer web that attached to the wrist and you get your standard slinging web hand <laughs> I got it it's supposed to go on the left side. 
All right, so the last couple of things that are included are this base right here with the uh, the white spider emblem for the game right in the center. And it does have various ports that you can move around to attach this stem stand. Now this one does not have any articulation at all. Instead, it does come in three separate pieces that you can adjust the height width. So you can see you can snap it in half right there. And at the very top, like that, and this part is bent at a 90 degree angle. And you are supposed to tap it in, in either one you want, but I usually go for the middle. Now there are a couple things you can do with this. I'm going to just set it down to the uh, the middle setting so you can see it on this camera. So like that, there are a couple of things. First thing you can do is Spider-Man does come with this um, interchangeable part for the middle of his back, which is like a port, and you can plug that into the stand itself. So if it wasn't on the second level, you, you would have a better, more convincing uh, form of looking like he's swinging. You can see it supports him just fine. So at first I was a little upset that there was no articulation on this stand, but now second guessing it, you know, it's a lot more sturdy and he was definitely going to stay up there and, and it's not going to uh, possibly break from the screws or anything like other stands like cases like the, uh, the Mafix stand, which I've had some problems with before. And as well, you can also attach this little guy. It is the uh, Spider Bot, Spider Bro, or something like this, something along those lines. But this is the little guy you can use in the side missions in the Spider-Man game to like... Uh, Diffuse bombs and such so this guy does have a little um, hole on the bottom of it and it's very nicely uh, painted and uh, sculpted There's a uh, web pattern on the very top of it. It has uh, four eyes and all eight legs and the paint is very clean So you can take it and attach it to the stand itself like that or Or you can attach it to this magnet that is also included and it goes like that, so it can go up to your fridge or whatever kind of uh, metal you have around you. And of course, it's going to also plug into the back of Spider-Man itself. So, it does have a very strong hold. And it's uh, not the same as, you know, the Mafix having it on their feet and their hands. But it's a good thing to have this, you know. Uh, it would probably look a lot more clean. So, this is some pretty cool accessories. So now on to what I believe is the most important part of any Spider-Man figure from any line. Import, Marvel Legend, whatever it is. The articulation and I'll go ahead and say this right off the top and I think it does a really good job of hiding the articulation especially down here in the knees you can see the kneecaps are very like hidden and like very seamless so that's pretty good as well as the elbows but I'm jumping ahead of myself so let's sort of we're at the top of the head I said before there's a hinge at the top so you can go up you can spin that around 360 there is not much of a tilt because he's got traps to his ears but you can get it all the way down on the second neck joint and then the spin around so that can also help with looking either way. Now there is armpit butterfly articulation, so I can go in and out just a tiny bit, not enough of a difference for me. They do do, do this weird thing where like they cave in when you try to push the arm out. So either that's to help the articulation out or it just feels like a weak joint in there. So might not want to force it that much. So the arm does go out that much and you can get it up and around. And I do feel like there is a ball joint from what I can see that follows the uh, the range of movement so it can only either go one way when you have it out so that's that so there's no bicep cut which is very unfortunate i think they can make this work because it's not that thin of a of a plastic piece he's got double jointed elbows he does have a wrist hinge via the ball joint inside of the hands so you can spin that around you can do up and down and side to side either which way. Now the uh, ab crunch you can go down a little bit. Not that much. Back a little bit more so. His tilting is kind of weak. It doesn't really lock into place. But most of his articulation comes down from on the waistline. So there is a barge one in there that if you push it down too much it will expose this back here. It's not so bad but as long as you have him posed on the front you can't really see it. And there are some uh, sculpt lines that are continued down here from the suit. So you can just hide that back there. Uh, his hips are arguably the best part of this entire figure. Now they do have this entire feature where you can bring them out that much. And these things are crazy. They have like plastic in here and here. If you bend them down into squats, the guy has articulated butt cheeks. You know, that's unique. So you can get them out that wide. He does have a thigh swivel. Double jointed knees that stop around right there because he's got huge calves. I already grabbed about the ankles, and you can shimmy this up somewhat. Uh, going up sucks. He does have a tour articulation, and he does have an ankle pivot-ish. It works. It works. It's there. So pretty cool. Nice articulation. Probably not the best that just figure has made. Um, I kind of do am curious to see what it's like to hold a Far From Home Spider-Man in hand to compare to this. 
But enough for that, let's get to some size comparisons. First up, we got the Asus Figuarts Mark 50 45, the Age of Ultron Iron Man. So you can see that they're a pretty good height next to each other, so I like how that looks. Asus Figuarts Age of Ultron Captain America. The SHF Homecoming Spider Man. So you can see that they've been kind of following the same scheme and articulation ever since they came out with this guy. Now you can see this guy I told you. I got him out of the box. The first second got him out, tried moving his leg around, and his leg just snapped off. So, you know, that sucks. This is super glued. So I rarely ever touched this guy at all. But now looking at it, I realized that this guy has a bunch of texture on the red and in the blue. And I feel like for this uh, game figure to be accurate, he does need a little bit of a texture, at least in the blue. So, that's just a minor grip. I guess I just prefer the super accurate realism of how the suit looks. Because obviously in a video game, the graphics are very realistic. And so the suit has a more, like, uh, movie quality to it. So, there's that. And lastly, in this comparison, it is the Marvel Legends version of the Game Reverse Spider-Man. So, nothing to bash against this figure, because at the time this came out, I really would have been happy if I never found out we were going to get an Asus figure or Spider-Man. So, what this guy did right was at least get the costume, uh, the pattern, everything correctly. The paints, you know, was hit or miss. You really had to be lucky with finding one with decent paints. The back spider came out pretty cool. So, if I had to complain about one thing about this figure, within the Marvel Legends quality standards, it would be just be the head sculpt. That's it. And, uh, and a pair of open hands. That would have been it, because it only came with the fist and the web shooting hands. But, of course, Edge's Figure Arts is a lot better. They're a much... Uh, uh, higher end quality company, so they're gonna make a lot better figures, but I gotta say it does suck that this guy can get his shoulders out a lot better That's the one thing dude SHF could have had a basically it could have been in my top 10 spider-man figures of all time if they had just done that correctly, but I guess this is how it is so after this SH, SH figure of spider-man We are gonna be getting a Marvel select version and around December maybe early 2020 so I can't wait for that for once in reviewing, I think I'm actually conflicted. I love this piece myself personally, of course, you know. I don't pick anything up without loving it. But, as a recommendation for other people, uh, solely based on the aesthetics, and the leg articulation, the accessories, and the quality, and the paint, and all that kind of stuff, it's uh, it's solid, very solid. It's uh, the best representation of the... Uh, the advanced suit that we're going to get probably in the six inch scale so in that regard if you can look past the arm articulation and a somewhat janky ankle articulation going forward then you got yourself a solid spider-man because you can get him into to get him into some pretty badass poses as you're about to see in this little slideshow after this part so yeah i do recommend it as long as you can look past the flaws that i described so i'm sure you guys can make the decision for yourselves uh right now is a really good time to still grab it you can still find it on ebay from japan sellers for about 60 to 70 bucks uh, a little extra for the shipping but it's totally worth it rather than paying upwards of 100 and more from people you know in america so you guys decide uh, as you can see this is a, a mafix stand by the way just because i don't personally like using the other one because i don't like taking out this tab on his Mac because I know I'm going to lose it and the fear of uh, taking off the paint once I tab it in so uh, that's just a personal thing it's not really a big deal but anyway hope you like this video I'm going to go watch the Joker now stay tuned for Margato Perro I promise I am going to make another video after this stay tuned thank you for watching